Welcome to another episode of Love Selling Hate Sales. I'm your host, Josh Wagner. Today, we're going to deviate from our standard guest-based format and talk about a topic that's super important to me and I think is super relevant to all of us in the profession of professional selling, and that is the importance of confidence. So the other day, my son, who is a Padres fan, says, hey, dad, Fernando Tatis Jr. is about to come back. He's getting ready to do a minor league start to rehab and come back to the bigs from his wrist. And my wife overhears this conversation and says, God, that must be really hard for him to have to go play in the minors after being in the big leagues for so long. Is that a shot to his ego? And I said, no, that's pretty standard that when you do a rehab assignment, you start in the minors in order to build confidence against minor league pitching to work your way back up. You don't want to just get thrown into the wolves against the best pitchers in the world when you haven't played for six, eight, 12 months and just start going and hitting against professional pitching. It's a confidence builder. And she was like, oh, wow, I didn't really think about that. I thought it would be the opposite, having to go back down and play against the minors. When all of us who understand professional sports and professional baseball know that he didn't get sent down to the minors, he's been re- Fernando Tatis has been rehabbing from an injury for almost a year now. So the whole idea behind someone doing their rehab assignment in the minors is fully built around helping them rebuild their confidence as a professional athlete. So I love the parallels between professional sports and sales. At the end of the day, it's a performance-based business. And what really matters is the result. You can be doing the same thing over and over and over again. And sometimes you can be riding a high. You can be really crushing it. And then other times you might be doing those exact same things. And it's really, really, you're really, really low because the results aren't there. So how do you ride those ebbs and flows of confidence as a professional seller? And I think about it in this cycle. Really, there is that very top that I talked about. And that top starts with when you're in the zone. They talk about that in professional sports all the time. You hear in baseball, here in basketball. He's just really in the zone. And everything he's doing seems to be working. And it's the same in sales. You get into the zone where it seems like everything's moving in slow motion. You're hearing what the prospect is saying. You're able to quickly route it to the right types of solutions. You are pulling all pulling all the right strings in the conversations. You're playing the psychology. And no matter what you do, it seems like you can't lose. And for sellers, that's a great feeling. And that typically catapults your confidence to an all-time high. A lot of things come with that, right? Closed deals means more income, means more just overall confidence in you as a, as a performance-based professional then what happens is that high, you keep doing those same things. Maybe things might slip here and there, but it starts to wane a little bit. You don't necessarily hit for the same average. And now all of a sudden you were closing nine out of 10 deals. Now all of a sudden you see yourself closing six out of 10 and maybe it slips and you're closing four out of 10 and three out of 10, but you're still riding high from that confidence boost. So that's okay. But then all of a sudden you find yourself in this slump where you're not closing and you start to look back and evaluate the things that you're doing. And you really feel like you're doing the same things that you had done before. And I can tell you from firsthand experience, this happened to me very recently in 2021. I hit my number on five deals. I had a great year. Every deal that I worked on was very intentional. I worked the process perfectly and I got the right outcome. Fast forward to 2022, the first half of my year, I continued doing the same things, but the results weren't coming. In the first quarter, I was like, fine, it happens. You're gonna, you're not gonna win them all. By the time the second quarter rolled around and the same lack of results was happening, that confidence was starting to wane. And I could really feel the weight of this performance slump on my shoulders. And all of a sudden you start to question, am I doing the right things? Do I need to push here? Do I need to do something different? Does my process work? Is my, is it me? Is it my, you start having all of these questions about what's going on when at the end of the day, you can only control what you can control. You have to stick to the fundamentals. The worst thing you can do is start reaching and reaching for things that are outside of your norm, outside of what makes you great, 
outside of what puts the focus on your customer, the customer's results, and how you can make the most impact on their business because that's what's going to have the most impact on your results. So what you then start looking for to get out, you know, you talk about this in baseball all the time is the slump buster. What's it going to be? How are they going to get out of this funk? And if you keep doing the right things, focusing on the right deals, focusing on the process, that will come and it will happen. And I can tell you in the beginning of the third quarter, that slump buster, so to speak, deal happened. And it's amazing how just seeing the bat hit the ball to be, keep to continue with the baseball analogy helps to just propel things in the right direction. All of a sudden you have that little bit of jump in your step, that little bit of swagger. And the next thing you know, you're in the next two weeks, you're closing another three, four, five hundred thousand dollars $500,000 worth of revenue. And you're starting to that upswing back into the confidence zone, right? I wouldn't say I'm fully in the zone yet, but I certainly am feeling it start to that pendulum swing in that right direction. You know, one or two more deals go the right way for me. You're going to be all the way back out of that valley and onto that peak of being in the zone. Confidence is a really delicate balance in sales as it is in professional sports. And it's a real mental challenge for folks because it's one of those things where you can't stray, you can't deviate. If you know you're doing the right things and by doing the right things, that means focusing on your customer, focusing on their outputs and really focusing on making sure that everything that you are doing is getting to that positive end results. There are always going to be extenuating circumstances. There are always going to be things out of your control. I can't tell you how many times in the first half of this year I heard due to macroeconomic circumstances, we're putting this deal on hold. Listen, that's something out of my control. But again, you start pressing. You start looking for those things that's going to get you out of it. When the reality is what's going to get you out of it is what made you great in the first place. So at the end of the day, in sales like professional sports, confidence is king. It's really our role as sales professionals to focus on the things that matter, focus on what we can control and ensure that we are putting our customer at the center of all that. In my experience as a professional seller, and from those that I know that are 10, 100 times better than I am, those that succeed always focus on the customer's out outcome before their own. That's something that you can control every single time. There's always going to be ebbs and flows in the confidence cycle, but if you make that the number one thing all the time, that confidence is going to stay at an all-time high. Hope you've enjoyed this episode of the Love Selling Hate Sales podcast. I'd really appreciate it if you could go to Apple and leave me a review. Tell me what you think of these solo episodes. It's something I'm going to be sprinkling in every now and then, a little deviation from the standard guest-based format. I really enjoy it. It's a chance for me to get my thoughts out, but I want to hear from you. If there's anything that you would like to get some of my thoughts on, Put them in the feedback. Send me a direct message on LinkedIn. I'm Josh Wagner AZ. You can drop comments on the page. You can go to lovesellinghatesales.com. I would love to hear from you. Thanks for joining the show. <laughs>